term, or what we usually learn, what epiphany is, I mean, the um, synonym of it is manifestation, okay? Manifestation, meaning to say that God reveals himself or manifests himself, especially to the Gentiles during Epiphany. And that's what we're observing during this season. But in a country or in a host country when, where their language, one word would be different, would be a different meaning, would have a different meaning, we have to be very careful, okay? Because here in French, in French, when you say, il y a une manifestation, well, in fact, at one point when they were doing that, where I was riding on a taxi, I didn't have any choice but to take a taxi, and I said, oh, this again, manifestation, I was talking with the driver. And you know what the driver said? Oh, yes, that's their favorite sport here. Manifestation meaning to say, demonstration, agrarali, okay? So, uh, uh, I, I agree with Father Don that we have to be very careful, explain very well, especially with the, our children who have been growing up here and they know already the culture of French and the word manifestation has a different connotation, okay? So, uh, we would rather uh, use and also sometimes use it, uh, the word manifest, uh, manifestation, but I uh, will prefer using, for the time being here, especially in France, the word revelation, okay? Uh, epiphany is the revelation of God to, especially to the Gentiles, okay? Uh, we know that uh, Christ was a Jew, he was Jewish, uh, he had to fulfill the law, you know, that's why he had to actually, our lesson for today, our gospel for today, he had to undergo baptism, to prepare another generation, okay? So we have to use that kind of, shall I say, semantics, because uh, they, might, they might create some misunderstandings, especially with the children that we have as they grow up also, you know? And it is rampant in some other countries, you know? I'll give you an example. In Italy, you know, uh, when they say prenotata, okay? Uh, oscita prenotata, you know, I mean, uh, when uh, in a bus, you know, uh, well, there are some Romans here, uh, Romans, <laughs> from, you know, you know, prenotata, you mean to say you have to, um, the, uh, here we have arrêt demandé, okay, arrêt demandé. So they have this word demandé, which is prenotata. But, uh, you know, because it has been ingrained or encrusted in their mind, the word prenotata, you know, even when they reserve in a restaurant, they say, I already have made, I already have prenotated. Okay? I don't know if you say that also, but actually, pardon me? Actually, it means you have reserved. Okay? You have reserved, that's the exact word. That's the meaning of it. Okay? But because they are already in that kind of culture, it, it, they, they, they don't realize anymore about the correct and right meaning or the right word to, to use, okay? Uh, even here in France, you know, uh, I would, uh, some people hear them saying, uh, I demanded uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, I, demand, I, uh, I demanded the, the French government, uh, uh, you know, about my card, you know? But you don't demand. You ask or you apply for, okay? Careful, because when you demand, you're somebody, okay? When you demand, okay? So careful, you know? You, so you see there are those things that are, you know, somewhat you have to, uh, to consider so that uh, you will be able to um, avoid misunderstanding. Okay? Epiphany is true manifestation, but we would rather um, prefer the word revelation to avoid misunderstanding. But we will use that also once in a while. Okay, to avoid redundancy, okay? So, epiphany is when God has been revealed to the Gentiles, to the, to the non-Jewish group of people. Now, if you have noticed, our gospel for today is very short. 13 to 7, 13, 14, 15, 16, 7, five, script, uh, five verses, okay? And this is actually one of these uh, gospels that are short and the whole uh, history, I mean, not history, lectionary of the church, okay? Although it is short, 
we can see or we can actually take out so many things from here, many information about here talking about the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, first we can see that there was this triune presence. When I say triune, three persons. We are actually, um, uh, how would I say, uh, Trinitarians, okay? The three trinity, okay? We are Trinitarians. CEC is Trinitarian. We believe that there is only one God, but they exist in three persons, meaning to say, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, sometimes it's difficult also to understand what Trinity is, but uh, I, I believe most of you have undergone the new wine seminar that's been explained to you, and uh, I, I, I hope that uh, there's no more misunderstanding about that. But the only thing I can say is that we believe in one God, but that God exists in three persons, namely God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in our Gospel for today, there is a triune presence. We have the appearance of the Trinity. How? There was the voice. The voice of God the Father. Okay? And there was the man being baptized or have been, have been baptized. And there was the Son. Okay? And then there was the Spirit that went down in a form of a dove. The triune presence, triune presence. And not only that, not only presence, but also the witnessing. And uh, as Christians, now it's important for us to witness or to give our testimony. And we have a very good example, our good model. It's our Trinity, the Holy Trinity. Now, how did it happen? Now, the triune witness is this, in the Jordan, the Trinity was manifested or was revealed to humanity. The Father bore witness. What did he say? This is my Son, okay, of, of which I am well pleased. And then the Son received that witness. Okay, he received that witness. And afterwards, the Spirit gave confirmation. He gave confirmation. A witnessing of the Trinity. Now, we might be asking, kailangan ba ni Jesus Christ na magpagunyag? Did he really need to be baptized? So, if you can see, if you remember, the first reaction of John, of John the Baptist, you know, he said, uh, Ako pa nga dapat ang magpa, uh, magpabinyag sa iyo. This, it should be me who should come to you to be baptized. But yet Christ insisted. Okay, so, this is the reason why Christ had to be baptized. Okay, you see, Christ had two nature. He was 100% man and 100% God. As God, he doesn't need to be baptized. But as man, he needed to be baptized. So, he was baptized as man, but as God, he absorbs sins. Okay? So he needed no purifying rites himself. You know, in the Jewish tradition, uh, before a man could be restored or could be declared as clean, they had to undergo a certain purifying rite. Women, for example, women, if you have delivered a baby, after a certain period of time, you had to undergo a sort of cleansing, okay? A purification. And Mary underwent that purification, okay? You, uh, so uh, that is, they are very strict with that, the Jewish tradition. So here, Christ didn't need to be purified. He, didn't have, he, didn't, uh, he doesn't need to, be, to undergo a, the rite of purification, okay? But he had a very important purpose. What was the purpose of his baptism? If you remember, 
when man fall. Nung nagkasala si Adan at saka si Eva, okay, hindi lang tao ang naapektuhan. Not only man was affected when man fall, but nature as well was affected. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga thorns and thistles. Remember the Bible in Genesis? And then we have this, you know, these uh, poisonous plants. And then animals became wild and savages. You know? So that was actually the result of man's fall. Okay? You might be asking, ibig mo sabihin yung leon noon? Mabait? Well, if you would remember also, when God saw Adam lonely, Adam said, oh, I will look for a helpmate for him. Kaya, ito isang animal. Giraffe. Sabi ni Adan, ang haba naman ang liit nito eh. No, this is not my helpmate. Okay? And now here comes the lion. Ah, roaring and everything. You know? no, but, you know, uh, did, did you see the situation, the, 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 um, um, the, the creation, I mean, during that time? You know, when God presented all this and, you know, I, I'm just amazed with the wisdom of Adam. He was the man, he was the one who named all these animals. Okay? Zebra. Ayoko ng kulay nun. No? Naninipa pa. No? Okay? So, you know, so no one really satisfied Adam to be his helpmate. So finally, he made Adam, uh, he, he, uh, I mean, he laid Adam to deep sleep and then well, that's when he took, you know, one of the ribs of Adam and fashioned, fashioned, ladies, fashioned the woman. Okay, man was created, but women were fashioned. Yeah, marami kayong verbs. <laughs> Can you see the difference in your opinion? Created man, <laughs> okay, but women were fashioned. Okay. Do you agree with me? Yes. That was the right word. In, I mean, that's the exact word in the Bible, in the Word of God. You see? <clears throat> see? So, uh, uh, and then, pag sinabi pang fashion, it was really, you know, hindi lang yung tuk 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 No. No, when you fashion a thing, you know, it's with, you know, very careful pa yan, you know? I mean, so, you see how, uh, how God loved you women? May I hear amen for that? Hallelujah. Boom. Okay, so, you know, from this creation, you know, uh, we can already see that nature was affected. And so finally, when Adam saw Eve, he said, this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. So finally, he found his helpmate. Okay, so, side, well, side dish lang yan, okay? Sabi sa inyo, eh, kahit na five verses na yun ko, eh, marami tayo makikita dito eh. Okay, so, anyway. So, why did Christ have to undergo baptism? Okay? Now, His purpose, in as much as nature was affected, now, His purpose was to hollow water. Hollow, di ba yung prayer natin? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Meaning to say, ano ibig sabihin ng hollow? Huwag sabihin sa nagre-reset lang kanya, hindi nyo naiintindihan. Boom. <laughs> holy be your name. Okay? To make holy or to, to consecrate. Okay? Or to sanctify. Okay? To sanctify. Okay? So, Christ had to undergo baptism for him to hallow water, or to sanctify the water, to consecrate the water, to make water holy. Okay? So, that was the reason why Christ had to undergo 
One of the reasons why Christ had to undergo baptism, he did not need it, not at all, not at all, but yet he had to undergo that. And then, one thing that we have to see in here also is the descent of the Spirit. Now, what was said in the Bible or in the Word of God is that, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. Descended as a dove. In this na bidito na, descended, uh, no, he did not say, not a dove descended, but descended as a dove. Pakita niyo yung diferensya? No. Hindi sabi na, um, a dove descended. Okay? It was not a dove that descended. But the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Clear? Okay? So, descended for what reason? Not that the Lord Jesus himself might seem to be in need of the mystery of sanctification, but that Jesus himself might sanctify, that the Spirit also might sanctify. And that is St. Ambrose that said that. St. Ambrose, the very first bishop of Milan, okay? He said, not that the Lord Jesus himself might seem to be in need of the mystery of sanctification, but that he himself, or Jesus himself, might sanctify, that the Spirit also might sanctify. And not only that, why in the form of a dove? Sa lahat ba naman ng ibon, bakit kalapati pa? Sa Pilipinas, marami tayong makasabihan about kalapati, di ba? <laughs> but here in France, they have, a, uh, they have a difference between in Colomb, yan pigeon. Okay? Ang pigeon, at tika mo, Colomb muna, ang Colomb, anong kulay? Puti. Yung pigeon? Okay. Hindi puti. <laughs> Okay, hindi puti, okay? So, but in Tagalog, in Tagalog, kalapati rin yun eh. Puting kalapati. <laughs> kalapati na, bom, anyway. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but God, I mean, why in a form of a dove? A dove, you know, this is what uh, uh, Origen and Tertullian was saying, and also Augustine. A dove, a tame, innocent, and simple bird. Hence, we are taught to copy the innocence of doves. Innocence of doves. Now, Sister Tolkien, I'm going to say The Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove in order that the nature of the Holy Spirit might be made plain by means of a creature of utter simplicity and innocence. Simple and innocent. Now, St. Augustine is saying, the dove is not for sale. It is given gratis. Hence, it is called grace. Grace. So, the dove is also a symbol of grace. God's grace. Remember the difference between grace and blessing. Grace are what we receive although we don't deserve that, okay? Okay, so, with a dove, actually, there is a gentle deliverance because dove also are gentle birds. And St. Chrysostom is saying very important things about this, but I will not deal with that anymore. That will be too much. But one thing I want to read to you is what one of our church fathers wrote. Uh, his name is Ephraim the Syrian, okay? Uh, you know, for those who are fond of movies, okay, there are mga actors, directors, you know, uh, and then yung behind the scene, yung mga hindi nyo nakikita, yung mga sumulat ng mga dialogues, na tawag dito ay mga... Screen... Pardon me? Script writers. Script writers, okay? Mga script writers. 
Sila yung nade-describe ng, ng, ng situation, okay? Anong sasabihin nito? Anong sasagot nito? Okay? Pa, ano ba? Anyway, and then afterwards, the director would determine, okay, yung mga movements, mga blocking, you know, yung directors na yun, okay? But here, a very good writing by Ephraim the Syrian, one of our church fathers, you know, and uh, I find him a very good scriptwriter. Because in those five verses, he was able to show uh, what is really behind it. Kung baga sa kwan, di ba meron na kasabihan na, you read between the lines. Kahit na isang kwan na If you read between the lines, uh, you'll understand the underlying you know, things, concept or, or meaning, etc., etc., of the thing. Okay? Now, this is what he wrote. Uh, remember the gospel a while ago? O gusto niyo basahin ko ulit para ma-refresh kayo? Babasahin ko na lang ulit para ma-refresh kayo. <laughs> Nakikinig ba kanina? Gusto ko naman kasi guru para malaman niyo, makita niyo. Okay, so. Uh, anyway, five verses lang to. Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted Jesus. And after being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove, as a dove, and coming upon Jesus. And behold, a voice out of the heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay. With that in mind, tandaan nyo yun. <laughs> Ang ganda yung situation na yun. Okay? Now, this is the script na sinulat ni Ephraim the Syrian. Okay. Sabi dito, Today, the source of all the graces of baptism, the source of all the graces of baptism, sino yun? Sinong source of grace? Sino sa palagay nyo? Sino? Sure. Sino? Kaya nga nagpabinyag siya para siya magiging source of baptism. Okay? So Jesus himself. Okay. Today the source of all the graces of baptism comes himself to be baptized in the river Jordan. There to make himself known to the world. To make himself known to the world. Remember in so many um, instances, narrations, when Christ would uh, make signs, wonders, miracles, he would say, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone about this. Why? Because it's not yet time for him to be revealed. Okay? So I think that would be clear, you have a clear idea now why Christ would say, after healing a person, and he would say, go your way, but don't tell anyone about what happened here. Okay? Because there was a time for everything. There is a time for everything. That's what Ecclesiastes say. Okay, so... Uh, to make himself known to the world. Seeing him approach, John stretched out his hand to hold him back. Parang pinigilan niya, okay? Protesting. Yeah. Itong kanyang dialogue. Okay. Lord, by your own baptism, you sanctify all others. Yours is the true baptism, the source of perfect holiness. How can you wish to submit to mine? To my baptism, John the Baptist, the baptism, which is baptism of repentance. Okay? So, but the Lord replies, I wish it to be so. Come and baptize me. Do as I wish, for surely you cannot refuse me. Why do you hesitate? Why are you so afraid? Do you realize that the baptism I asked for is mine 
by every right. By every right. Karapatan niya. I think we people here in France understand that very well. France is a country of rights. Uh -huh. Kaya, I have the right to do this. I have the right to do this. Kahit ngayon mga bata, you know, sinasabihan ng mga, mga tao at nanin nila, tinatalo doa. You know? Na, anak lang yun, ha? Sabi ng mga parents, ito na pala doon ka. What? Nespa mo si Lulat. I mean, si Lulat is free. I'm laughing, okay? But anyway, but, uh, France is a country of rights. Okay, so, so here, Jesus is saying, Do you realize that the baptism I ask for is mine by every right? By my baptism, the waters will be sanctified, receiving from me fire and the Holy Spirit. That's the dialogue with Jesus Christ. And then, here's the narrator. See the hosts of heaven hushed and still as the all-holy bridegroom goes down into the Jordan. Wow. Para kayo nanonood na sini nito. Eh. Ako nang binabasa ko, para kayo nanonood na sini. My music pa yan, ah. you know. Very silent, but here comes the music. And while Jesus Christ is going down to the river Jordan to be baptized, dramatic. Okay? Can you say that? That's why I love this. I love this. Okay? So, um, I see the host of heaven hushed. Okay? And still, as the all holy bridegroom goes down into the Jordan. No sooner is he baptized than he comes up from the water. He went up immediately. Okay? His splendor shining forth over the earth. The gates of heaven are opened. And the Father's voice is heard. Now, the dialogue of the Father. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the ending, okay, of the narrator, all who are present, all who are present, stand in awe as they watch the Spirit descend to bear witness to Him. O oh, come, all you peoples, worship Him. Praise to you, Lord, for your glorious epiphany, which brings joy to us all. The whole world has become radiant with the light of your manifestation. Oh, beautiful. That's why I wanted to read this to you and make a sort of you know, dramatization for you to see how that happened. Five scriptures, I mean, five verses, short, but yet, you know, full of meaning. Full of meaning and full of messages. Now, alam ko na kanon na yan, but anyway, ako conclude na ako. Uh, now, this is what Hippolytus actually uh, wrote, because afterwards there was the human and divine reconciliation. Remember, when man fall, he was separated from God. Okay? So everyone, but no one went to heaven then, you know, and because of sin, man was separated from God. But when Christ was baptized, there was a sort of reconciliation, divine and human. Man, God and man made manifest. Made manifest. I know, this is what Hippolytus said. Do you see, beloved, how many and how great blessings we would have lost if the Lord had yielded to the exhortation of John and declined baptism? If you see the hesitation of John, you know, the you know, baptism would not be possible and then the reconciliation of man would not be possible anymore. How can we enter heaven now? Especially to us Christians. It's only during baptism that we enter the kingdom of God, right? Okay. So, for the heavens, but uh, listen to this. For the heavens had been shut before this. Remember, because of sin, the heaven was shut. Okay? The region above was inaccessible. Walang nakakapunta doon sa taas. You know? Heaven, by the way, is another dimension. It's another realm. Okay? 
but we see that it is up, but it could be also beside us. Remember, Christ was saying, uh, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is being within our reach. Okay? Meaning to say, of our uh, liturgy, uh, the great thanksgiving, there was actually the coming together of heaven and earth. Okay. So, there is that reconciliation. Okay. The region above was inaccessible. We might descend to the lower parts, but not ascend to the upper. <clears throat> so, it happened not only that the Lord was being baptized, He also was making new the old creation. He was bringing the alienated under the sector of adoption. Remember one of the writings of the Apostle Paul? He said, we're aliens of the covenant. We're not included in that covenant. But when Christ died for us, when he redeemed man from all unrighteousness, we were adopted. We became children of God. You became sons and daughters of God. For straightway, the heavens were opened to him. A reconciliation took place between the visible and the invisible. The celestial orders were filled with joy. The diseases of earth were healed. Secret things made known. Those at enmity restored to amity. Enmity, amity. Okay, ami, pag sinabi enmity, enmity, anong ibig sabihin ng enmity? Kalaban, okay? Or adversary. Or meron kang you know, you're not close to that person. You, there's a distance between you and that person and everything. An enmity, okay? Uh, because of misunderstanding or whatsoever. Okay, so, but amity, from the word ami. Okay, ami, friend. Okay, so, this is what happened exactly. That there was a conciliation between God and man. And that was through the baptism through baptism. Why? Because water had to be hallowed, had to be cleansed. That's why when we are baptized, that water cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness meaning to say all our sins are being washed away. Washed away. Nahugasan na tayong ating kasalanan. I believe that all of us here have been baptized. Right? Okay? Nahugasan na tayong ating kasalanan. Kaya, pwede na tayo magkaroon ng, ng, uh, ng personal relationship with God. We're no longer, we're no longer um, away from Him. We can come to Him in Jesus' name, of course, in His presence. Now, so what happened was that even when we are being baptized, we become born again. Okay, but uh, careful. The word born again has been misconstrued nowadays. Okay? Born again means born from the above okay born from the above okay. so from on high okay that's the meaning of being born again meaning to say that born in the spirit because man died the man died spiritually so man had to actually be resurrected and when christ uh, rose from the waters it was a foreshadowing of man's Resurrection. That's why we are being resurrected with Christ when we are being baptized. Okay? So, and what happened also was that Christ became the firstborn. Remember the, um, the psalm reading that we have today? He, was, he became the firstborn. Okay? Now, in the Jewish tradition, uh, male children, firstborn, they are being sanctified. Meron niyang ritual. Okay? Now, uh, there's a liturgy for that. Now, uh, so far, we have not done that yet. We're just waiting for the decision from the, uh, from the bishop, whenever we'll do that. Okay? Uh, there's a special liturgy for that. Setting aside of first male child. Okay? So, in the same way, Christ became the firstborn. And firstborn, actually, the other word for that is first fruit. Okay, first fruit. That's why 
Christ had to be presented in the temple. He had to be dedicated to the temple because he was the first fruit. And when we say first fruit, in the Old Testament, first fruits are holy. They are sanctified. They are hallowed. They are holy. Okay? So, first fruits. In the same manner, when we actually are earning something, we are encouraged to give our first fruit to God. And when we do that, we worship Him with our first fruit. Amen? And that's what we call, technically speaking, in the Bible, the tithe. The tithe. Ikapo. Okay? So, uh, I believe most of you have been educated about tithing. Okay? So, but nonetheless, what we want to see in here is that how Christ became firstborn. He was the first fruit and that has been hallowed. And him being God also, when he was baptized, he hallowed water. He hallowed water. And us, being also God's chosen people, we are encouraged to worship him with our first fruit, which in the Old Testament is very important. And Baksabin Old Testament, no, it's even more important now that we understand how Christ, what he has undergone for you and for me, for us to be adopted as children of God. 